This is what is referred to as the oughtness of life. Morality is what people do, but ethics describe what people ought to do. And yes, people know what they ought to do, but that doesn't mean that they always act according to that knowledge. You know, um, Matthew said a lot just now. That's true. You know, your first impulse would be like, you know what? Go, go help. See, like, um, like, um, the other day I was walking to school, you know, focus on school, etc., etc., right? So you walk into school after I get catch the bus. So then I see this man. He was in a wheelchair. And he was like stuck. So then my mind just tell me, say, you know what? Go. But then I was in a bottle like, you know what? Should I go? Because well, from far as I can remember. Like, should I go? Or should I just go to school? Because, you know, I have to be at school at a certain time. But then I still went. And... When I went and I did what I had to do and I helped them out, etc., etc., then at school, someone said, someone, the man, the man said, you know what, um, I heard that you, um, that you uh, did a good deed to someone this morning. Now, I didn't know that my senior master was going to be watching me or someone was going to be watching, my, watching me and, and tell the senior master what I did, but my mind wasn't on that. My mind was on, you know, trying to help this man and trying to shoot forth God's glory in everything I do. So, it, it was still was a, a struggle. It still was, even, even, even now, like when you, when you doing, when you trying to do the will of God, your first mind would say, you know what, do it. Then the next mind would say, no, don't do it. Then the third voice would be like, you know what, that's the will of God, you know. Then you just say, you know what, I relent, I just give up. Anyone else had that experience? While you're talking about it, I was thinking about it, but like none just popped in my mind. <laughs> but if I remember, I'd say it during the program. But um, the everyday um Christians, I heard, uh, I usually hear um atheists usually doing those good deeds, and usually the everyday Christian isn't like um isn't like um isn't like um doing all those charities not saying that they're bad or anything but like I don't usually see like Christians just going around helping other people mm. like we're supposed to and sharing mm. the sharing the love of God with exactly. them exactly that's, that's, that's true and that's a serious thing you said you know look at the life of Christ how many persons know the song I want to be like Jesus you, you know the song right you, you know the song but you but you have a yeah, person like it, it's here in prayer, and when people saying, you know what, I want to be like Jesus or make me like more like Jesus. But you know Jesus, you know we he never had a house of his own, right? Like he never, yeah. like worked to build a house. He slept where 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 where, where his head rests at night, and his mind wasn't on gaining the material the, the material things of this world, but actually on doing this, the will of the Father. His attention was on others. And many persons, many of us, many of us, we say, you know, we want to be like Jesus. But do we really want to be like Jesus? Do we really want to, not to be, want to, you know, be self-denialing like Jesus? I, I give you an example, but just before I came to, to, to the show, um, there was a lady, um, she was, she just came and I, at, first, at first I was using the computer at this particular place, right? And then the lady come and then she asked, they asked the other person to, you know, allow the lady to use the computer. But I was used doing my homework and stuff. So now the lady, she, she just um, getting the stuff for the buy to go on the computer. It's only two computers that she can go to. So, and, and only two computers there, but only two computers that, you know, we was on. And then she could have gone and any one of them. But then the, she, they, they asked the boy to you know, allow the lady to to sit down, but then he ain't do nothing. So then I was like, wow, Lord, like, I don't want to move. <laughs> I don't want to move off my seat, way because I then was that, that the finishes thing up, but I like, you know what? I just stand up and allow the lady to, you know, sit down. But when I think of it, you know, it's, that's just a, you know, giving up a seat, right? But, but then it could be a test. You know, you know. exactly. And, it's it's a serious thing, but you know, it's being self-denial, allowing other persons to go first 
it's just like when mommy giving out the food, you know, in the house. Ah, uh, say for example, mommy giving out the food and you just rush in. And you wouldn't allow the other sibling to, you know, get their food for us. Or, or you wouldn't be, or say for example, they distributing food. Mommy, most of us would be at the front of the line. But how many persons say, you know what, you know what? I know plenty of people other, other than me hungry. Let me go to the back of the line. But today, right, when I was in the shop, I was when we to go to get some more stuff, but then another lady was with us, and then she was cashing up her things. And then, like, we had this whole trolley to cash up, and I was taking the stuff out and putting it on the um, thing for the woman to cash up. And then this girl come to me, and she was like, if she could come in front of me. And I was like, yeah. And then, I don't know, this is, like, the first time that ever happened. Not, like, someone asked me, though. That always happened. I let them go in front of me. And then, but she only had one item. Mm-hmm. So I was like, of course, and stuff like that, right? So then... This is the first time it ever came to my mind. I was like, I wonder, like, if I was a main person, if I, like, I would be like, no, even though she had one item, and then, like, we had way more stuff than her. I don't even know why it came to my mind, and then you come right here talking about these type of things. And then I was like, I, I, was, I was like, I never could see myself doing something like that to someone. I would feel, like, so guilty. And then, in the end, she still ended up going on a different line. She still didn't even end up, like, cashing up her stuff there. So you um, allowed her to go in front of you? Yeah, but then she, she must have been really in a rush because I think she was a COB student. So then she just gone to someone else and asked them who must be like moving quicker. Okay, okay, okay. Because another lady was like in front of me cashing up her things, but then she just didn't wait and she just went to someone else. Yeah, man. You see, it's, it, it, it's those everyday, everyday life experiences, you know, that, that really... You know, um, test our faith. You know, we could be yeah. studying, you know, the books or the Bible all day long inside the room, lock up. But it's when we get out there and when we have to face the trials of life that we really have to shine. And like Sister White said, you know, right, is that the world now needs a revelation of Jesus Christ. And it is my prayer that, you know, Lord, make me. You know, shoo forth your glory in me. You know, make me one that when persons look at me, they would see your character and they may believe. You see, yes, it is true nature. And that we, just as just true the birds, that we see the love of God. Yes, it's true the Bible, we see the love of God. But seeing the love of God in a person, a living, working person. It's, 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 it, 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 that just subdues the heart, man. That just softens the heart. That's a message. That's a sermon in itself. And I have the direct quote, what I said last week from C.S. Lewis. It says, my argument against God was that the universe seems so cruel and unjust. But how had I got this idea of just and unjust? A man does not call a line crooked unless he has some idea of a straight line. What was I comparing the u- this universe with when I called it unjust? If the whole show was bad and senseless, senseless from A to Z, so to speak, why did I, who was supposed to be part of that show, find myself in such violent reaction against it? A man feels wet when he falls into water. Because man is not a water animal, a fish could not, would not feel wet. Of course I could have given up my idea of justice by saying, it was nothing but a private idea of my own. But if I did that, then my argument against God collapsed too. For the argument depended on saying that the world was really unjust, not simply that it did not happen to please my fancies, thus in the very act of trying to prove that God did not exist. In other words, that, whole, that the whole of reality was senseless. I found I was forced to assume that one part of reality, namely my idea of justice, was full of sense. Consequently, atheism turns out to be simple. Turns out to be too simple. If the whole universe has no meaning, we should never have found out that it has no meaning. Just as if there were no light in the universe and therefore no creatures without eyes, with eyes we should never know it was dark. Dark would be a word without meaning. And we continue reading from the question. Well, the difference between the atheist and the Christian in this sense is that the atheist may act ethically for certain reasons. Example, not wanting to go to jail. 
It disrupts social order, it makes them look good to others, etc. But he has no ultimate reason for acting ethically because there is no ultimate moral authority that exists over each sphere of his life. Without this ultimate authority, each atheist defines morality in his own terms, although his morality is influenced by the remnants of morality from the image of God within, along with the structures and the constraints of the culture and society in which the atheist exists. And we go to Romans 3 verse 12. They are, they are all gone out of the way. Yeah, they are together, together become, unprofitable. become unprofitable. There is not, there is none that doeth good. Not not one. No, no not one. I think that how it says, there is none that doeth mm. good. Basically, it's telling us that. I mean, to the athe- if you're looking at it from an atheist point of view, like if an atheist reads this, then they should realize that not every Christian, not every Christian is perfect, and they can't like just base because because one Christian or so-called Christian they may not even really truly mean it in their heart that they're a Christian do one sin or slip up that they would just totally abandon God or abandon the church. Because in the scripture, it tells us clearly that there is no one who doeth good. Only God is good. Mm-hmm. And you can't call no man good except for God. Mm-hmm. Um, the point you made on last Thursday, right, about there's none that doeth good, with, and that's taken from Psalm 53, right? Mm-hmm. It says, the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. And when you said that, that actually, I actually read that differently now that you said it that way. Because now I read it, the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. Meaning that the fool, whoever acts, a sinful person says in his heart that there's no God by his actions, basically. Mm, yeah. You catch it. In his heart. Mm-hmm. In his heart, you know. Um, and it's by our lifestyle that we, that we, that we, that we um, make a confession of faith. You know, we could say that, you know, here I stand, I cannot, I'm not, but we can't. We could say that, you know, all the Jews, I surrender, but in our lifestyle, that's a confession of faith. You know, because, um, because it says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so, by your words, you show that I, I like, it's almost like saying, I don't, God is not the ruler of my life, and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I live my own life, basically. Exactly, and mm-hmm. saying with one mouth that God is the ruler of my life, and mm-hmm. I want to live yeah. for him, when... When, what he asks you to do, you don't do. Yeah. You and, know? Um, that's also what atheists don't really like that much. They don't like other people ruling their lives. They like they like to just take control of their own life and mm-hmm. not have anyone tell them what they're doing or anything. And basically, they don't want to have no rules. And God has ten main rules, and they don't even... They don't want to hear about <coughs> those and... About the rest either, so they would just say that there is no God. I stand the first Corinthians because, I mean, there was a scripture I can't remember. It was in Psalms two, it, not Psalms two. I mean, it was in Psalms, and it said something like uh, the I can't remember it. Just say it. Not that one. It, there's another one that sounds similar to that. But we could, y'all can continue with that. Okay. Yeah. Speaking about, um, you said a statement that I want to address. Um, yeah. Let's go to First Corinthians chapter 6, right? Verses 19 and 20. Yeah. Anyone read it? Um, First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought, bought with a the price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Whose property is our body? God, God. and the Holy Spirit. So, when people say, I am going to control my life. What life they just you? cursing God straight up. And the Holy Spirit, and they basically saying, telling God to take the Holy Spirit out of them. You see, God owns us. 
by one creation and by two redemption it's just 